So what is your inspiration for curating art, specifically for your current exhibition, Wonderland? This exhibition is from a permanent collection, and these works were all picked by the staff at the Bronx Museum. Uh, and the staff there really decided to go with works that were uh, highlighted youth with a sense of wonderment. And if you look at all of these works, they might seem sort of heterogeneous and they don't really all naturally go together, mm -hmm. but when you start to sort of pull them apart, they all have a kind of fantastical, dreamy, what we're, we're calling Wonderland um, quality to them. So the idea that the photograph is sort of a document you can trust has really um, eroded in the last couple of decades. And so that sort of adds to the sort of dreamy Wonderland quality about some of these images. Like, did they really exist in this, uh, in this way? The gallery is what we call a Kunsthall, a German word for a temporary exhibition space. We do a lot of group exhibitions. That's really one of the uh, missions of the gallery, is to take emerging artists who are maybe perhaps from the Bronx or from the local community uh, in broad-based thematic exhibitions, uh, combine them with mid-career artists who, have, um, who are working and living as artists, and then those group shows tend to have a few high celebrity or more high-profiled artists in them. But the real mission of the gallery is to bring professional artwork uh, to the community um, at Lehman College and also the surrounding area of the Bronx. One of the programs that we have that's very popular is actually a tour of the grounds of the college. We have over 18 pieces of public art here at the campus and so we, we bring students around, we talk about public art, how public art is designed. Uh, the gallery also keeps a database and a website of architecture in the Bronx and public art across the borough so that's something we've had a large, long commitment to. Why do you think it's important for people to form opinions about art? It's important because people don't always associate, uh, connect with art. And I think that art, especially contemporary art, is a reflection of society today. And I think that if you're making an opinion or forming an opinion about what you see, um, you're forming an opinion about society today. And I also believe that there is no right or wrong. So I don't think that people should have to like something just because it's popular or um, because everybody else likes it. I think it's important to, for people to know that um, aesthetic, things that are aesthetically pleasing um, isn't for everybody. So how do you continue to look for pieces which spark discussion? It's always about finding pieces that maybe aren't exhibited often. Uh, the good thing here at the Art Gallery of Lehman College, is that we're completely non-for-profit, so that's much different than normal galleries you see in the city. So we mm -hmm. have the opportunity to show things that really spark discussion, uh, as opposed to something that's going to bring in the big dollars. We focus on documentary storytelling, so telling the stories of the lives of the people in our community, the businesses in our community, the lives of our student photographers, um, and using that work to kind of connect with everyone here, but also it's a really important way of connecting yourself with the world and kind of gaining real life skills and investigative skills and being able to connect with people is incredibly important as well. Who or what inspired the idea of having an archive? The library grew out of the, the death of a friend of mine. He was a, a conflict photographer, as, as was I and he was covering the war in Libya. Um, he was killed in Libya in 2011. His name was Tim Hetherington. Um, he was my roommate, my closest friend. And his mother gave us all of his books uh, after his death, and so we used that to start our library. What is the importance of the archive to the Bronx Documentary Center? I think the importance of the archive is that, um, you know, we're strong believers in books and in the printed page. I mean. Everything is digital today, and digital is great. Um, to be able to sit down and, and turn the pages on a book and read the copy, and also to see how pictures are laid out, um, to see editing choices that are made when books are put together. Um, you know, books are the basis of our civilization. You know, they, they go back thousands of years. They're, they're crucial to everything that we do. Yes, I understand that you do programs for teens as well as Bronx-based photographers. Right. Why is it important to provide these programs? Teens are our future. <laughs> you know, it's um, you know if we can start kids early. Um, I mean, what I see is a lot of people going into college when they're 18, 19, 20, and getting interested in journalism. If we can start teens when they're 13, 14, 15, then they already have such an advantage. By the time they get to college, they have like a whole foundation, um, and it gives them a big a big jump start. And that I think translates into better career opportunities. Michael Camber, our founder, kind of has an idea of 
what's happening right now that he wants to talk about and bring to the Bronx and make it a current, a current theme so that people can learn about. And in terms of successful, I think personally, and probably our education coordinator would agree, is our student show, which we just had in June. And we had all of our students do stories on immigration. So they went out and they found people to interview and photograph, and they created multimedia pieces around their projects. Usually for our exhibitions, we try to have at least four events, which are film screenings, artist talk, or some sort of gathering that has to do with a theme that kind of encompasses his work. The name The Laundromat Project, that's an interesting name. How mm -hmm. did that come to be? The idea was to, original idea was to bring artists and working with community members while they were waiting for the laundry to uh, happen. Around us, we have um, uh, the work from TJ Mohammed. Okay. He's an artist from Ghana, oh. and he lives in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been doing this project called Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it means uh, I am because we are. So the idea is that we're all connected, and my, uh, let's say my, well-being, it's uh, influenced by your well-being. So if you're well, I'm well. Um, yes. <laughs> so part of that idea is to celebrate women in the Bronx. So uh, all of the fabric that you see, he's been collecting from uh, his travels in Ghana and also in different parts of Africa, but also different parts of the Caribbean. And he's been able to build this sort of a sanctuary uh, for women. And so he's been doing portraits of women in the community. Uh, so these are folks that live close by and around here. Are most of your artists from New York or are they international? So we work with artists that are based in New York. Um, they might have come from elsewhere. As long as they live here uh, and they're invested uh, in, the, in the communities that they're in, here in the Bronx, uh, in Bed-Stuy, in Harlem, that's what we look for. So, you know, we have artists from that were born and raised in New York, um, but also artists have, have come from elsewhere, but they're living now here. Are there any future projects that you're looking forward to? We're, we're in the process of um, setting something up with an artist collective to, to work from here and connect folks to things that have happened maybe 100 years ago. Um, so it's still in the work, so I don't have a lot of details, but we're excited about that. What has been the most successful program The Point has done? Um, we have great programming in uh, dance, we have great programming in photography, we have a social circus program which is pretty cool, um, you have activism programs, you have culinary arts, you have theater, uh, filmmaking, uh, zine making, we have a little bit of all of those things. Can you name some of the issues the participants of ACTION have tackled? Our Action Young People, um, which stands for activists coming to inform our neighborhood, they're young advocates and they're young organizers. And so they're very involved in a lot of the different things that are happening in our neighborhood, including things like displacement, including things like um, the, the food, school foods, right? Mm -hmm. You're th looking at things like um, sh shutting down the, the Sheridan Expressway, which is a highway that's not used properly. We want to turn it into green space for the community. Mm -hmm. um, they also do work around uh, the school to prison pipeline. You know, how do our young people end up in jails? What's mm -hmm. that about? How do we work um, on that issue? And so they work on all these things simultaneously, plus other things, air quality, water quality, um, you kind of name it, they do a lot of different kind of things. And then they're doing stewardship. They're actually uh, doing farming and cleanup uh, projects in the community, you know, muraling projects, things like that. Okay. How does the point revitalize the culture of the South Bronx? Um, we are always revitalizing the culture of the South Bronx, and that's our richness, you know? When people mm -hmm. tell us you don't have anything, your neighborhood is full of drugs and prostitution, and we can point to the, the good things that we know we have. You know, we have people like Tats Crew in this neighborhood and graffiti murals all over the world and they're ambassadors for, for our community. You have people like uh, the Palmieri brothers who help bring salsa to the world, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, hip hop. I mean, you talk about all these things that we do for fun that people now make money off of. Knowing that we're artists and that we have culture that people want, 
um, that people make money off of. It's important for us to be able to galvanize and again, be able to live off of, you know? Our community should be a bunch of artists that can travel the world and, and do what they have to do for their families and make a living. That's how we revitalize the community, you know? We don't look at any opportunity to be creative as a waste of time. When you can solve problems and you can think creatively, you can make some good things happen too, you know? Thank you